This is Chandler Waller for Boxing Social in association with Bet Fred. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Jonathan Camateo. First and foremost, Jonathan, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. Obviously, uh, you know, a bit of a hard situation to deal with at the moment, everyone being down in lockdown. How are you finding lockdown so far? To be fair, um, lockdown for me has actually been very chilled and relaxed. I chose to use this time to kind of sit back let my mind and my body rest. So I'm just really embracing this time period until, you know, we wait on the government on the next move, really and truly. So I'm just trying to make the best of it in terms of winding down, letting my hair down um, and resting because that's something that I haven't done for the last three years, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, I mean, obviously it's a bit of a crap situation for you because you were meant to be making your pro debut, pro debut in April. Um, like, how have you been dealing with that? Well, initially, um, it's crazy actually because I was excited for quite some time and I hadn't, and I still haven't put it out yet. So um, I was waiting for my medicals to come back. I was waiting for the medical dates originally. Then I was waiting for the board's meeting. So it was a long time coming. However, when we got there, it was like, okay, so I got the fight date. Um, I had about five weeks to prepare which I was already in camp. I was actually aiming for a date mid-April and um, I was actually given an April 17th date um, for an unannounced show that wasn't announced in the end because Boris Johnson um, announced the lockdown and mm. prior to that, the British Boxing Board of Control suspended all professional boxing events indefinitely. So we kind of knew there was an announcement that was due so I was still in the gym and it was playing on my mind a little bit as in, damn, is a fact going to happen? Is it not? But I was more concerned on catching corona and having to pull out. So I told myself, if I catch corona and pull out, damn, I'm going to be devastated. However, if all of boxing is cancelled, then I can't really complain. For me, it's like this. I've already been practising patience and now it's just another time to apply it. Hmm. I mean, there's obviously been a lot of talk about like behind closed door shows and studio shows and like, obviously for you, like, it's not ideal. Like nobody really wants to have their pro debut behind closed doors. You know, you kind of want the crowd there, but you know, it's, it could get to the point where it might be your only option. Like, are you open to doing that? A hundred percent. For me, it's about this. It's all about being versatile and being able to adapt in any circumstance or any weather. So, I mean, ideally I'd want, everyone to be there but if I have to box behind closed doors then it is what it is because in a sense in the amateurs we pretty much did that a few times there's been times when I've boxed away 300 miles away in Devon Exeter and I live in North London and it's like yeah there's a crowd but the crowd aren't there for you I'm the only um, <laughs> person of colour in the venue and um, I boxed and won so to me it's like boxing behind closed doors in a sense even worse because the whole crowd is against you and there's been times when I've boxed in front of 30 people, 50 people. Um, and then there's been times where I've boxed in front of 500 people plus. So I feel like with the experience that I have as an amateur and me being a very calm, cool person, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, you're, like I said, you're obviously new to the professional game, like you've signed with Frank Warren. Um, I'm sure people want to know as much uh, as much as they can about you before you do make your pro debut. Um, so let's start from the beginning. Uh, when did you start boxing? So I started boxing just a few months prior to my 16th birthday, um, sometime in September 2011, at Finchley Amateur Boxing Club. Um, the gym was very busy. Um, I didn't have my first bout until October 2012, when I was 16, shout out for my 17th birthday. And I won that against an opponent who had a few fights under his wing. And it took off from there. I then went on to have 30 fights or so. I would have had, in my opinion, I would have had around 60 fights if it wasn't for suffering from HS, mm -hmm. which I was suffering from for four years of my um, amateur career. And however, I still competed. I still boxed. I opened elite level. Um, I still won the London under 20 novices went on to the national semis, lost, and then had to take some time out. Coach told me to take a week out, and then I started to feel severely ill. And that was the second time when I had the issue of HS. 
But other than that, um, I've been boxing for Finchley. Um, I would only ever box for Finchley as an amateur. I believe in loyalty. My coach, Sean Murphy, and the other coaches down at Finchley, Gary Foley, um, etc., they they helped me right from the beginning. So I feel as though if I was to box for Finchley, I mean, box as an amateur again, it would have to be for Finchley, no matter the circumstances. You know, Finchley left England boxing for a while, and I stuck by them. And when they came back, I'm now making my transition. What sort of influenced you to take up the sport? Was it specific fighters that you were watching? Or was it a random clip? Or what was it that convinced you to take up the sport? My one is actually quite interesting. So um, in school days, I used to be highly competitive. If there could be a winner, whatever it was, I'd want to win, whether it be getting the best grades, um, football, rugby, tennis, table tennis, whatever it was, I wanted to win. So me being a winner at school, my friends challenged me and they said, you know what, you think you're the strongest, you think you're the best at everything, why don't you try boxing? At first, I'm not going to lie, I was not interested. You know, I thought, damn, I'm going to go home with a bruised face, black eyes, broken nose. I was bleeding all the time. My mom certainly wouldn't be happy. So I didn't take it up initially. And then I moved neighborhoods from Finchley to an area called Barnet. And my neighbor turned out to, my new neighbor turned out to be my, one of my good friend's older brother who boxed for Finch ABC. And then I just thought, you know what, I'll go down to the gym with him one time. And I instantly fell in love with the sport. Yeah, I mean, you you said there that like you instantly fell in love with the sport and you also came into the sport at that sort of, like the age of 16, really the age when you start thinking about your future, really. That's the sort of, what sort of, at what point did you realise that boxing was what you wanted to do as a career? Okay, so at the time when I was um, shy of 16, I was in the Sea Cadets. Um, and um, funnily enough, there's only two things I've ever wanted to be. And that was to be an officer in the Royal Navy and to become a professional boxer. And funnily enough as well, I didn't know that you could actually be a boxer in the Navy so um, and get paid. <laughs> so maybe I should have gone that route, but I'm playing. Um, for me, I realized, I think when I was about 18, I said, this is what I want. This is exactly what I want. I want to become a professional boxer. And, um, once COVID is out of the way, that's exactly what's going to happen. And you, like you've already mentioned, you you have that bit of a stump in your amateur career um, where you battled with HS. Uh, I was just wondering if you could start off, like just by telling me and the viewers who are tuning in, um, who maybe don't know what HS is and how it affected you. Yep. So hey, these skin condition. Um, it's pretty much an autoimmune um, skin disease because what happens is your body is attacking itself. It only affects 0.4 of the world population. And what it basically does is attack your sweat glands. So um, your sweat glands, which could be located on your underarms per se and other areas. And what happens is it clogs up the sweat glands and creates uh, repeated abscesses. So you get an abscess, then it might go down and it might, um, swell up again and then it become it can become so big that you have to have an incision to get it removed so that's what happened to me on my first two operations it first started on my right underarm it wasn't painful at first I went to see my GP she gave me medication and it started doubling size every day this was around I believe 2015 um, and then 2014 actually and then it became so big that it was painful for me to put my arm down. So I was always just chilling like this. And then, you know, me being an alpha male, I didn't want to go to the hospital. Eventually I was forced to go to the hospital. They told me I had to spend the night there to have an operation. That was so painful. Um, I remember waking up and I was in so much pain. However, I recovered reasonably quick within six weeks. At the time I was still studying my A-levels at um, Sixth Form College. Um, recovered reasonably quick. I was back in the gym within six weeks, but my skin, my under, the skin on my underarm didn't quite close. So every now and then I could be in the shower or something and the skin would just tear open. I could be sleeping, wake up and my top, there's loads of blood on my top. Fast forward to 2016, uh, which is about a year and a bit later, 
I still wasn't diagnosed with HS. So they were giving me different types of medication. They just thought I kept on getting repeated abscesses. And this time it spread to my other underarm. And that for me was crazy because I was actually training for the under 20 novices at the time. And there was days when I couldn't get out of bed, but I'll just force myself to. And then, you know, when the adrenaline kicks in, it's like the pain is masked, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then I'll train, train, train. Won the London under 20s, got to the national semis, lost. But coming towards the, um, in preparation for the championships, there was times when my underarms would really swell up and they would bleed a lot. But I'll just put dresses on. I'll literally wear huge dressings about the size of my hand. And I'll just put it on and still train all them all the time because there'll be times where literally I'd wake up in a pool of blood. It was that severe. Um, lost in the national semis, took a week out and I started to feel weak. So I feel as though it got reinfected because the skin would always open, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then um, come New Year's Eve, I couldn't, I couldn't get out of bed. It was, it was almost heartbreaking because I went from prior eight weeks to winning the London under 20s to I can't get out of bed. Literally, I couldn't even do five star jumps. That for me was, it hurt a lot, it hurt a lot. And I promised myself that day, because I remember watching everybody's Snapchat and everybody's Instagram stories. Everyone was out living their best life. And it wasn't that aspect that got to me. It was the fact that, wow, I went from boxing to now I can't even get out of bed. Everyone's enjoying themselves. Everyone's lives are continuing. And I just felt as though my dream was being taken away from me. But, you know, January came, I held it down, had another operation. And this time I was out for eight months. I was literally in bed for eight months. I was so weak that when I got back, when I came back to the gym, I couldn't even do 10 reps of the barbell on its own with no weights. I literally had to start using the, the dumbbells at four kilos. You know the top ones that mm -hmm. the, some females use when they go to the gym? I literally had to start at the top and work my way back down. And that for me was painful. I remember leaving the gym after my first session. I sat in the car and I just wanted to cry, but I couldn't. Um, we overcame that, went back to boxing eight months later, had a few more bouts. And then when the season finished in April 2018, I told myself I must chase up my dermatologist to find out what can be done because I can't continue boxing like this. And if I want to turn professional, I can't have these holes in my underarms. I can't keep waking up and I'm sleeping in a pool of blood. I can't keep feeling pain all the time. I did just that, chased them up because um, I also have private health care. And then um, she told me to speak to a surgeon that specializes with people with HS which is short for hydrotinnitis, had the consultation and my surgeon told me that I'd need a skin graft and they would literally have to remove my armpits, my underarms. Um, I agreed to it. She said, do you want to attack it one body part at a time? I said, no, I want to do the whole body. She said, it's going to feel as though you got hit by a bus. And I said, I need to get back to boxing. She said, okay, okay. Um, had the operation November, 2018. At the time, I wasn't using social media. I didn't use social media for two years because I was really down. You know, I went from, like I said, went from winning the London Championships to I can't even do 10 reps at the gym. I can't even do 10 press-ups. So it was painful for me, you know. It was difficult for me to accept. So when I had the operation, though, I, just, I saw the videos and I said, you know what, I must put this out there because there must be other people going through what I'm going through and I did just that and it went viral people from all over the world were messaging me I'm Olympic athletes celebrities big company CEOs other boxers and it was I, re I received a lot of love a lot of love from all over the world and what was also heartbreaking was to to see people from several countries message me about it I remember a girl from Iran actually messaged me about it she said that she was suffering from the same skin condition, but she couldn't consult a doctor or speak to her father about it because it affected her in um, her private area too, in which HS can. And she said that in her country, they would deem her 
I can't really go into it. Um, she said that, you know, she just couldn't because she would be kicked out because I think it was something else. Mm. So can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, messages like that. And then I received messages from other people asking advice on what to use for HS and how to get through it, how to deal with flare-ups, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you know what? In my opinion, it was a blessing in disguise putting that out because it helped me network with so many people. And it also allowed, it made me feel a little bit better to realize that, you know what? There are people out there who are suffering and going through what you're going through. And you know what? They're picking up that circumstance and they're still winning at life. They're still getting on with what they need to do. Because those times when I feel really sorry for myself, I'll be sitting in bed. I'm like, damn, why me? Why me? But now I just look at it like a blessing in disguise. I mean, look at this situation that we're all in right now. We've been forced to rest. You know, a lot of us can't work anymore. That was me three times. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So for me, this time period, I'm just using it to kick back, relax, because once it's go time, it's time to go hard. And I've already been going hard. I haven't stopped training. I've been training during this quarantine and I'm just going to stay as ready as much as I can. As soon as the lift, um, the stop on boxing is lifted, I'm ready to go. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, I've obviously seen some footage and seen some photos and, you know, it is, it is quite hard to look at. Like, yeah, it's how, very graphic. Yeah, yeah. How hard did it get for you and what was it like mentally for you to deal with that? You know what, because it was my third operation and I knew I needed to be operated on, I kind of, it took, I prepared for it for a year, if that made sense. So, but where I messed up was I concentrated so much on the physical recovery. When I did recover, which was within eight weeks, I had a breakdown. I had a mental breakdown because I was overwhelmed. So originally I returned to training in February last year. So in and around 12 weeks after the operation and I was training for about six weeks and then one morning I just I couldn't get up not because I was in pain or anything I was just overwhelmed there was so much to sort out so much to sort out and that's when it clicked that physical and mental recovery go in hand and I focused so much on the physical I didn't realize I needed mental healing so I went away I took some time out the gym about four weeks or so, got my mind right, and I've been going hard at it since. But it was a lot easier than the first two operations because the first two times I felt as though I was alone in this world. I felt as though no one was going through what I was going through, especially no athlete. But once I had the operation, I realized there was a lot of athletes, Olympic athletes that re reached out to me and said that they were suffering from something similar. So that gave me the extra power and the extra strength. And for me as well, when I realized that there's people out there going through what we're going through and taking those same circumstances and situations and winning with them, I stopped complaining, honestly. And I also realized, you know, having been around some of the best athletes the UK has to offer, I realized that those who visualize right through to the end usually make it there. So for me, that was calming. I just told myself, you know, use this time to rest. And when you get up, once you're ready to go, there's, 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 no, there's no laying down. So that's, that's what it was for me. That got me through. And the people support, I was receiving literally about 300 messages a day from people all over the world for about five months. Even till this day, people message me weekly about it, asking me advice, asking me how, do, how should they deal with it. Um, asking me which operation is best suited because I had three different operations and the last one being the plastic surgery. So, and that worked out for me. I haven't had a single issue since. And it, it was, it was, it's incredible. It's a very fascinating, you know, you wouldn't even be able to tell I had an operation. When you look at the video, it's crazy, it's graphic. If mm -hmm. someone showed me that video before the operation, I don't know if I could lay down and, and do it. But, it was a blessing in disguise, honestly. Did you think at one point throughout that stage, like you were saying that you were too weak to get out of bed and you had to start with like the smallest dumbbells available, like did it ever cross your mind that 
you know you might not be able to continue boxing yeah several times i mean i've had doctors tell me i wouldn't be able to box because the medication i was on and by the way i boxed four years on heavy medication literally um eight to 16 um tablets a day um or some strong antibiotics um but i mean lots of people did um when i told people about the health situation they would usually say you can't box again my doctors my gp they said like why boxing you know this is a very um tough situation that you're in there's no cure for it the operation in itself which i had the plastic surgery is only 50 50 um but shout out to Barbara Jemek and her team at the hospital. They they did a fantastic job. Everything worked out great. I haven't had a in, single issue since. And I've been feeling incredible in the gym. But when people said to me I wouldn't be able to box again, it hurt. But there was time when I said, I'm not going to accept this. I am not going to accept this. I'm going to overcome the circumstance. But you know what? It takes a lot. It takes a lot to get to that stage. There was times when I would just be laying in bed upset, like wanting to cry, but I couldn't cry, if that makes sense. But, you know, my, my doctor, the surgeon, Barbara Jemek and her team, they gave me hope because when I had my consultation, we were laughing and joking. And um, she said, you know, it can work out. It might not. But if it does, then you're in a great place to to go back and kickstart your pro boxing career because that's the reason why I had the operation. I didn't have to have the operation. So um, I had other options. I could take a, a jab to my stomach weekly or I could take um, Baracatane, which is like a, a strong medication that dries out your skin completely. And that would hopefully stop the, my sweat glands being blocked. But those two medications would mean I wouldn't be able to box at all because it messes up with your mental. And my GP and my doctors told me that if I train, I would be aching for a prolonged period of time. So the only option I had for boxing was to have a skin graft, which they had to take skin from my bottom, mm -hmm. a huge amount of skin, remove my underarms and my sweat glands and replace that skin. 50-50 operation, but here I am, making my pro debut as soon as COVID-19 is over. Yeah. All behind closed doors. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. And you're you're definitely a much stronger man than than uh, than I am for not crying. <laughs> but I suppose that's why you're the, the boss. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, you know what? Honestly, there was times when I wanted to cry. I just couldn't. I just couldn't. Yeah. It was like nothing's happening. <laughs> yeah. Did it did it affect your career like in terms of like fighting weight because of just I don't know if you would have gained weight or lost weight or like did you have to change weight classes when you came back? Uh yeah, so after my second operation, um initially I wasn't allowed to box, so I pumped a lot of weights. I was in the gym doing everything and I went to a twenty four hour gym, so I'd wake up three AM, go to the gym whilst no one's there, train for three hours. So I jumped up from sixty nine kilos to seventy six. And I have a very low fat body percentage. So initially I had to box around 75 kg for my first few bouts back. But it took me about 10 months to lose the weight because it was, there was no fat. I had to lose muscle and that was difficult. But because I was on heavy medication, it like sped up my um, metabolism, if that made sense. Mm -hmm. So when I didn't train, I'd always lose a lot of weight. And that's kind of my circumstance now. I feel like I don't take medication anymore. But when I don't train, I lose weight. It's like I don't, I don't binge eat and I don't really eat too much. I have a relatively um, healthy diet. I eat a lot of home-cooked food. I don't really eat fried food. I don't eat takeaway. I've never been drunk in my life. So I stay in and around my fat weight, to be fair. Right now, I'm around 72 kilos. Um, I'm probably going to campaign at welterweight, but I don't need to make the welterweight limit until it's a title fight, right? Mm. So I can easily make 69, 68 even. Yeah, um, just to uh, just to say really, like I'm just glad to hear that like it's all, it's all sorted now and that you've made a full recovery and that, uh, yeah, just, you know, thank you for being so open about it. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's a crazy situation. 
but it opened so many gates for me, honestly. I mean, a lot of people also reached out to me to say, you know, I inspired them and that I should take up public speaking. And at first I was like, I don't want to do that. But then once I got back on my feet and I wasn't able to go so hard on the training, I got in touch with a few schools um, to a point where I went to over 20 schools all over the UK, junior schools, high school, um, secondary schools, sixth form colleges, private schools, all type of special educational needs schools. And I spent time with over 10,000 students. And that in itself was very motivating. And every school was different. I went to schools as far as York, Birmingham, schools in and around London, Essex, Reading, um, Nottingham, many, many areas. And all the schools are different. All the kids were different. But it was fantastic. Honestly, it was one of the best experiences I had. And it gave me so much confidence and motivation. And, you know, from now on, I feel as though I'm all about youth empowerment and the youth. They are the next gen. So when I take off in boxing, I want to make sure that I stay in touch with the youth. I want to make sure that I still go into schools and, and spend time with the kids, um, take them for boxing workshops in order in, in hope to inspire them through my story and to um, kind of insert some type of growth mindset in them. Because some kids, you know, they're used to seeing the, the same visitors that will come in and say, you need to get the best grades and this, that, et cetera, et cetera. But I came in with a different angle. And also, I'm still young. I'm still a big kid. So um, I have fun with them. And they love it. Even in assembly, a lot of schools I've gone to, the head teachers will come up to me after and they said, you know, we had the whole school quiet. Everyone was paying attention. You could literally hear a pin drop. And they, they commended me for that because they said that, it's very rare for the, for the kids to stay silent in the whole of assembly. And even when I took the kids on the pads, initially the girls, they wouldn't want to be, they didn't want to take part. But once they hit the pads, they kept on coming back, Jonathan, Jonathan, let me go on the pads. JK, let me hit the pads again, please. JK, don't leave. And I'm, I'm booked from 9 a.m. to 12 noon and I end up leaving at 4 p.m. because I'm in the playground with the kids. They don't want to let me go. The teachers are asking me, please just come to our class, talk to the kids. But it was fantastic. And I want to still continue to do it. But I had to put pause on it to sort out my contracts, to sort out my training, because it actually required a lot of energy. Um, you know, not physically, but mentally. It, it was challenging at times, you know. Imagine you've got a bunch of year one kids, age five, four, five. And you've got to take them on the pads. You've got to talk to them about boxing. You've got to show them how to do um, a boxing stance. That was challenging, but it was, a, it was great. It was great. I loved it. And, you know, if I never put out that video on social media, this opportunity would have never happened. So it's important to put out anything because I feel as though nowadays with social media, it's people's highlights of their best life. And... It can make people feel a negative type of way because everything seems, seems so unattainable. But when you put out your vulnerabilities, you relate to many people. Everybody goes through struggle one way or another. So when I put that out, people could relate. And that's what it's, what's, that's what it's about for me, you know, being able to relate with anybody and that we are all the same. You know, I remember watching guys that Floyd Mayover coming up and I was like, damn, the roles, the women, the lifestyle, it's unreachable. But then when I was around people like AJ, so hardworking, world champion, unified world champion, two-time world champion, and see him go through the same situations or problems that we have as human beings, it's like, it's possible, it's possible. Seeing guys like him and other champions have been around be tired in the gym, it's like, okay. We all get tired, but we all have to be able to push through it. Because you know when you watch guys like Melva, he never seems to get tired. So you're like, damn, why does Melva get tired? Why do I get tired, but Melva doesn't? When you're around guys like AJ, they get tired too, but they just push through it. Their drive is just different. And that's what makes them different and cut above the rest. Yeah, that's, a, that's amazing what you're doing, mate.